So a few weeks ago, we did a video on the K20 Honda engine bottom end. Uh, I know you guys really like that. And in the comments, a lot of you guys are asking for us to do a head video. So here's the K20 head and some of the tech about it and what we do. Basically, the K20 has a really good head. Um, stock, it flows incredibly well. Um, you can do a lot with keeping the head totally stock, actually. Um, with the right bolt-ons, like a full, full bolt-on K20 with all the right parts, could probably make up to 280 wheel horsepower, um, no problem. Um, and that's probably on the conservative side. So if you want to get into the motor, you can see some of the things we did in the bottom end video a few weeks ago. Um, that's all fine. The cylinder head actually, um, up to a maybe 300 wheel horsepower level, doesn't require that much modification. If you're happy with 300 wheel horsepower or so, like what we would probably do is a good new and radius valve job or a good 33 angle, and then we would um, hand blend the 30 degree top cut into the combustion chamber and the 75 degree cut into the port. A little hand blending, a little cleanup, that'll get you 300 horsepower. Just that. That's pretty incredible. If you want to go more though, we have to get a little bit more fancy. Now, um, this is a build that we're doing for a customer and it's kind of like a max daily driver, max effort, um, 91 octane pump gas motor. Um, so this thing will put out power in like probably 325, 320 horsepower maybe as much as 330. It kind of depends what header, what exhaust, what air intake he's going to use. But, um, you know, it'll make anywhere from high teens to low 30s in the horsepower range. So to get this kind of power, you have to get a little bit more fancy for the head. What we have here is a drag cartel CNC ported head. Now, we really like drag cartel's head. Um, we, we sometimes we use 4P too. They have a very high quality cylinder head that they put out. But uh, we like Drag Cartel. They're not that far from us and they have everything in stock. Having all the parts in stock is a really good deal, especially when you're doing a customer motor because like the head is often a bottleneck in getting the engine assembled and turned around quickly. Uh, the Drag Cartel motor has um, CNC ports. This happens to be their street strip CNC port job, which, you know, we found is good up to um, 330. It'll probably even do more, but streetable cams are only good to about that much. Um, it has a fully CNC ported intake and a fully CNC ported exhaust. Um, they kept the port volume uh, small, uh, but what they've done is they've narrowed the port splitter, so you're getting more cross-sectional area there in a place that doesn't affect your uh, port velocity so your drivability stays good. Uh, it's mostly narrowing the, the port splitter and uh, getting the short side radius um, of the ports uh, more smooth and uh, not really increasing the port volume. You know, like I said, for this kind of head, uh, velocity is everything. That way you have bottom end and mid range. And this probably hardly gives up any of that. I mean, this head has excellent street ability. In our dyno testing, it's made more bottom end and more top end power. Uh, it's really good at low lift flow. Um, that's really important because your valve spends more time opening and closing than it does at maximum lift. Um, low lift flow uh, gives you more power all around without sacrificing your bottom end. The other thing, Dry Cartel has these in stock. You order them, they show up a few days later. That's a really important thing for customer satisfaction. So we'll come back to head options and what else we could do for you if you want to get a little crazy uh, in a little bit, but I'll talk more about what else is going into this head. Now the next most important thing is your camshafts. Uh, we really like the Drag Cartel um, uh, Stage 4 cam. Uh, we think that this thing is tremendously versatile, like it'll put out the power levels I was talking about has more bottom end than stock, has a smooth idle. Um, in the K20, it'll pull to nine grand. In the K24 hybrid, it's good for like maybe 86, 8700 RPM, but power everywhere, nice flat 
power band, nice flat torque curve. It's pretty awesome. I mean, uh, you know, like a, one of our uh, street killer K motors probably has a better power band, more torque, and um, uh, it's just more drivability than like maybe an SR20 DET uh, with a small turbo. Um, it's a really fantastic motor. But uh, the drag cartel cam, uh, we really like that because uh, they research their kinematics really good. So what this allows them to do is have very aggressive ramps. So this cam has a lot of lift um, with kind of a low duration. So the duration is what gives you the lope, the lumpy idle, and uh, the lack of bottom end. The lift is what gives you flow and power. And, uh, you know, by researching the kinematics, they have very quick ramps, but they still have good valve train stability. And that's all that magic cam science that could be like five other videos with really advanced math. But um, for lots of lift and low duration, we re really like the drag cartel cams. Uh, they also use a CNC grinder with a small wheel, which enables them to get like a inverted flank profiles. Uh, a lot of cam grinders don't have that ability and they have to use uh, larger wheels. And you get kind of like an old school V8 grind that doesn't invert. Like an inverted flank means that the cam uh, face is actually like backwards and hooks around. And uh, when you're using like a, a roller rocker like these K-series engines have, you really need to have an inverted flank on the lift side to get really good valve motion. It's, it's kind of like how um, if you had like a uh, sliding finger follower, the uh, fulcrum kind of moves as the cam spins around, but um, with a roller, it's kind of like at a fixed contact point in a way. So you need the inverted flank to get the right geometry. The other thing about the roller is the roller enables uh, kind of like a more radical opening flank uh, because it's like a spinning roller, just that you need to have the proper inverted flank to do it. And Drag Cartel has all the sauce in their grinders, so they're one of the few companies that can do a uh, good inverted flank. Uh, the Drag Cartel cams are also made out of uh, 8620 steel. Now this is a pretty good steal for camshafts because <clears throat> 8620 is a high alloy steel and it has a lot of nickel in it for toughness, which prevents the cam from flexing around and breaking, um, which could be a problem in some super crazy engines. Not so much a street engine, but maybe like an all out drag motor. Uh, the main reason why 8620 is a good alloy is that it responds really good to heat treating uh, so you can heat treat this, uh, it develops a really hard case for really long wear and abrasion resistance, but the inside, if you do your heat treating right, will be nice and ductile and um, not brittle. So you get the both, best of both worlds, a uh, really hard skin for wear resistance, really soft inside for ductility and strength. So uh, we feel that this is a really good cam for an all out, uh, like street build. It's also a really good cam for road racing where you need a wide power band and uh, long-term durability. It doesn't stress the valve train out that much and road race motors have to run at high RPM for a long time. So, um, it, you know, it's pretty good not to beat up the valve train too much. Dry Cartella has way more crazy cams and way more mild ones. Um, but if you're doing like a completely built max street effort or road race, uh, we feel that the stage four is the way to go. Next is the, uh, the rest of the valve train. Now uh, we like to use uh, Supertech valves and springs. It's a double valve spring uh, with a titanium retainer. Uh, having a lightweight retainer is important uh, to prevent valve float. So it has like less inertia and less likely to contribute to valve float. They have aluminum retainers, but we don't like those because they tend to be softer, so the keepers uh, wear out the hole and uh, the spring can chafe the, uh, the rubbing surface on the bottom. So in our opinion, titanium's the way to go for a longer service life. We also use Ferrera valve springs sometimes, and we always use Ferrera keepers. We found these to be the toughest and longest wearing. 
Next is the valves. Uh, we use Supertech valves, and what's interesting about them is they have this uh, flat contour, and this really helps your uh, low lift flow in this particular cylinder head. Uh, your stock valves are kind of a more of a tulip shape, but the Supertechs are flatter. Um, they also have this reduced diameter, like right below the head. Um, this helps flow too. I mean, it helps as much as 10% on some motors. I mean, with, personally, we've never done a before and after flow bench test between a full diameter stem and a reduced stem, but on other engines like, um, like a small block Chevy, it makes a really big difference. And these have four valves instead of two. So I don't know, it doesn't hurt probably helps a lot. Um, some of you guys were wondering about back cutting valves and some of the comments. Um, when you're running a stock valve, putting a 30 degree back cut on top of the 45 seat really helps flow. Uh, but these Supertex uh, with this uh, uh, valve face contour, um, they don't really need it. And then actually Supertech already does a 30 degree back cut, you can kind of see it right there. It's not going to make as huge of a difference as it does on a stock valve that actually has like a lip, but um, the exhaust valve doesn't have it, but the intake has a little one. Uh, when you look at the exhaust valve, um, it has more of a tulip shape. So when the exhaust is blowing out, uh, we found that to, to help, you know, more. So it's usually you want a flatter valve, um, backside on the intake and a more tulip one on the exhaust for best flow. Uh, you also have a slightly reduced stem, but it's not like super reduced. The reason why you don't want to reduce the stem too much is the uh, valve stem acts like a heat conduit. Your exhaust valve gets pretty hot because it doesn't have the fuel air mixture uh, going on it to cool down. So you want to keep your exhaust stem a little bigger there. So you can conduct heat away from the valve and uh, into the valve guide and into the water jacket. For valve material, generally for most engines, we go for an Inconel uh, exhaust valve. Inconel is a um, nickel copper alloy that uh, is really resistant to heat. It was developed for aerospace and uh, exhaust valves is one of the things that is really good for that. Uh, the intake, uh, we use uh, stainless and it's uh, with a nitrided stem and uh, nitrided everywhere else actually. The nitriding is like a really hard surface treatment. Um, it, it converts the iron in the steel into iron nitride, which is a really hard, almost ceramic-ish material that uh, is really wear resistant, so it's really slippery. On a turbo motor, we might go to a, a sodium filled stem. It, it depends, like a, a high revving turbo motor, we might keep with Inconel, but like a drag race motor, but a um, lower revving, but higher boost kind of turbo motor, we might go to the uh, sodium stem. Now the sodium filled stem is, the uh, stem is hollow and it's filled with uh, sodium metal and it's a uh, liquid metal that uh, is really heat conductive and that really helps draw the heat out of the valve. I mean, it's enough to where the tuner can see that there's a difference in detonation resistance that the engine has. So in a high heat condition, like a big boost turbo motor, um, sodium filled is always an option. Next is uh, some treatments. Um, we, if you watch our videos, we like uh, cryogenic treating and WPC treating. So everything in the valve train, we like to do both. The cryogenic treating stress relieves everything and it converts like uh, the austenite in the steel to martensite, which is a harder um, uh, crystalline structure. Uh, this gives the parts more strength and more wear resistance and more fatigue resistance. Um, once you do the cryo, we do WPC, which uh, is a surface treatment, and it gives like a lustrous, hard, very libricious surface that's wear resistant and also very difficult for a crack to propagate in, so it really helps fatigue resistance. We do it in every part of the valve train. Um, we don't WPC the VTEC rocker arms because the uh, media is really hard to get out of the uh, 
the lost motion parts and then the VTEC plunger and all that. Uh, but we do cryo that and we do uh, WPC everything else. So if you look at this luster surface of the cams, uh, the valve springs and retainers, the valves and the uh, rocker shafts, that's all WPC. The WPC gives a lot less friction, so the engine spins over a lot easy, easier. Now, like um, a good part of the friction of an engine is in the valve train. It's something like 60%, so every bit that you can reduce that, it helps. Um, also, the valve springs uh, last like, maybe like two or three times longer with this treatment, and they keep their pressure consistent over their life um, with this treatment. Valve springs also get really hot. Um, they get hot enough to like actually coke the oil sometimes. And if you're running at super high RPM, like nine grand and hitting that all the time, like a road race car, you'll actually see that the valve springs even uh, start turning color like blackish or even blue from the oil. Um, we noticed that when we WPC and cryo everything, the valve springs stay a lot cooler uh, this also helps their uh, life. Also, the uh, keeper hole um, um, doesn't get all hammered out, so like you can probably get twice the amount of service life out of the retainers. Uh, normally, when an engine comes back after a season of racing to get freshened up, uh, if we don't WPC and cryo, you have to change the retainers because the keepers are starting to sink down and the retainers starting to pop up and you're losing your valve spring tension and you're also probably gonna have problems later with uh, keeper retention and things, and you don't wanna drop a valve. Normally we replace the valve springs out of, um, out of an engine after every refresh too, if it's been like road raced or something. But what we noticed is that when we test the tension, if it's been WPC and cryo, um, you know, we, we run the valve springs like maybe double, like, like two uh, refresh cycles. So, I mean, this stuff might cost a little bit more going in, but you get twice the life, so you end up saving money there. So this is a uh, road race hot street motor, but uh, you can get a lot more wild than the K motor. So if you want to uh, maybe drag race or maximum effort, uh, Drag Cartel has two higher levels of CNC ported heads with uh, more port volume and more flow. You get more top end power at the cost of a little bottom end at this point. Uh, they also have a collaboration cylinder head that they've done with Endyne. Um, this is a whole custom bespoke head. It's not a modified Honda head. And uh, this thing has like pretty wicked flow. Um, it also has a little bit uh, of tweaks in the combustion chamber. One of the things I like is it has a uh, full quench pad on it. Now, some tuners don't like that. Uh, I like to have quench because um, if you have a full quench pad, as the piston comes up to TDC, all the um, end, end gases that don't get fully burned that are on the periphery of the piston, um, they get squeezed toward the spark plug and take, um, take part of the combustion process, so that helps your efficiency. Also, that jet of mixture being squeezed out helps your uh, combustion chamber turbulence and uh, helps for a more complete burn. Now, some tuners feel that the edge of the quench pad uh, is a detonation point and they lay it back. Um, Honda does that in the uh, stock chamber. Uh, you can see that stock from Honda, it's laid back and then drag cartel kind of on the um, exhaust side kind of does that a little bit more with their CNC machine. Myself, I like quench. Um, Maybe if you're doing a high, high, high boost turbo engine, you might want to open the chamber, but I think normally it's better to keep the quench, especially for NA motors, especially high revving ones too. Um, so you can get more wild porting. Also, you can get bigger valves. So if you're running VTEC and if you're running uh, the stock IVTEC system where the intake cam can be advanced and retarded by the computer, you want to keep stock valve sizes, otherwise you might have valve clash and overlap, which is going to give you a very bad day. Um, however, for drag racing K motors and um, maybe really serious racing where uh, you have a dog box with real close ratios, you actually get rid of the VTEC system and the IVTEC system 
and just run, and they call it a VTEC killer. Uh, the advantage of the VTEC killer is that you get rid of a lot of mass in the valve train. So if you want to build a K motor that revs to 10 plus thousand RPM, this is the way to go. Uh, you can run a really low mass uh, rocker arm without all the VTEC stuff. Uh, you can run bigger valves and not worry about clash, but then you don't have the wide, uh, really sweet streetable power band either. But you know, if you're building an extreme race car and you have a really close ratio transmission, uh, you don't need that. So VTEC killer, um, if you're running um, like exotic fuels like methanol or um, even if you're running E85 all the time, especially in the in the car that sees like extend high RPM use like uh, road racing, uh, you can go to like a, a copper beryllium valve seat or um, some of the weird alloys that are non-toxic replacement for uh, copper beryllium but still work really good. The, the copper beryllium is kind of slippery and um, doesn't abrade in that um, kind of environment. Like if you ever got gasoline and poured it on your hand, you notice it's kind of slippery and oily. But if you do methanol or uh, ethanol, it's really dry, you know, like rubbing alcohol. And that's what it does to your motor. Uh, your engine, all the uh, lubricant gets washed out by the ethanol or methanol, and you get a lot of dry metal to metal contact. So, uh, you got to be really careful, like things like your valve seats and stuff are subject to uh, to wear and abrasion from that. Um, even your valve guides, uh, you know, if you're running that kind of fuel, uh, we replace the stock valve guides with high silicon bronze. It's a lot more lubricious and uh, longer wearing in that kind of environment. If you're running pump gas, the stock Honda stuff is actually really good. It's a... Uh, it's a uh, centered steel, it's super hard, and it's designed for unleaded fuel, which is also pretty abrasive. Um, the, the stock stuff actually kind of works pretty good for ethanol and methanol too, but um, a lot of times we'll run the stock steel stuff till it wears out, then we'll replace it with uh, beryllium copper and, and um, high silicon bronze because um, the stock stuff's actually not that bad. But um, if it's something where you don't want valve recession and it's a race motor, uh, kind of like a Pikes Peak car or a time attack car, it's probably better to get, go with that stuff right off the bat. Uh, your performance will stay more consistent and you're, you, know, like you won't have to adjust the valves as much. You can do things like run titanium valves. Um, titanium especially on the exhaust side, uh, won't last very long, but it's uh, super light. So if you want to rev to 10K plus, titanium is always an option because the lighter you can get your valve train, the less likely you are to get valve float with uh, really radical cam profiles that you need to rev that high. Uh, titanium, you have to go to the uh, uh, silicon bronze and the uh, beryllium copper because titanium will just get all beat up by stock stuff and your service life will be really short. So it's probably only recommended that you use that kind of stuff for drag racing only. It's, it's not going to last very long and then road racing it'll just die right away. Uh, same thing with street use, it'll get all beat up. But um, you know it's an option if you want to rev high that's maybe the price you got to pay. Uh, drag racing, I mean, it'll, it'll probably last 50, 100 passes, but, you know, that's not that much in miles, really. <laughs> um, also, if you want to rev really high, I mean, like, there's more spring options from Ferrera, you know, like multiple spring tensions that you might need to control more radical cams at higher revs. Uh, basically, you know, we can do it all. It just depends what you want. I kind of like building these road racing max effort street engines because I mean, they're so sweet. Like if you get something that has bottom end grunt better than your stock engine, but like revs to nine and pulls like a freight train up to nine, that's a really cool motor, especially naturally aspirated. And it's real fun, real sweet to drive. So in the comments, a lot of you are asking about what kind of intake manifold to use. 
The one we like to use, and what I think is the best bang for the buck, is an RBC intake manifold, uh, stock Honda. Um, this works really good for anything from a full bolt-on to a uh, pretty internally modified motor. We probably use these on everything all the way up to like our max effort road race motors. The other thing is to use a good throttle body. Now generally, um, if it's like a car, late model car like an RSX, we'll use a 72 millimeter drive-by-wire throttle body. Uh, that works pretty good. Or if it has a cable throttle or you've converted to a cable throttle, uh, we generally use like a 76 uh, millimeter throttle body. An interesting thing we found in testing is that with a 76 millimeter throttle body and a three inch intake pipe, we're pulling a vacuum in the intake manifold at wide open throttle. Uh, so this means that the car could probably benefit from less intake restriction. So if you have a really healthy motor like, like this, um, we probably suggest that you run a 80 millimeter throttle body and 80 millimeter intake piping. So that's about three and a quarter inches. Other uh, people that have run this combination say it's good for as much as 12 horsepower. We're kind of thinking it would be probably about five or six more horsepower, but that's something to consider. If you wanted to go a little bit more wild, um, you know, they make some nice plenum manifolds. Drag Cartel makes a cool carbon fiber one. Um, we haven't tried that yet, but uh, we want to in one of our future builds. Um, you know, like a hot naturally aspirated or a big turbo engine is a whole nother deal. Uh, we think the best manifolds for these applications is a big plenum center inlet manifold, like uh, God Gato makes one. Um, there's a number, number of other manufacturers that make them too. When you're going for maximum naturally aspirated power, you're going to probably need a uh, throttle body about like a 90 millimeter. A uh, few companies make those. Uh, for a turbo motor, it kind of depends. If it's a pure drag race turbo motor, you might want to go 90, but if it's something like a road race application where throttle response matters, uh, you might want to go to like a 76 or so. And it won't cost you that much power with a turbo and you will have better throttle response. Some of you might want to ask about ITBs. Um, ITBs aren't for the most peak power, but they do make good mid-range, low-end, and decent top-end. Um, they look really good. They have really good throttle response. They sound great. Just remember with a K motor, you have to go a lot bigger than you would think, especially if you have experience with side draft carburetors. The uh, ITB size you got to run on a K motor sounds pretty nuts. But uh, even for a full bolt on street car, you probably want to run at least 60 millimeters. Uh, for a totally stock engine, maybe uh, 58 you would need. Otherwise, uh, your top end is going to really choke. For a uh, moderately built motor, uh, you might want to go uh, 60 millimeter. And for like a all out max effort ITB, um, maybe 70 millimeters. I think, uh, I think the biggest is 76. I mean, that probably wouldn't hurt for an all out ITB build. But remember, ITBs go bigger than you think. So that about wraps up our uh, K motor cylinder head tech. If you like this content and you want to see more, be sure to mash that subscribe button. Uh, that really helps us in the algorithm and the more popular we get, the more easy it is to fund all this stuff. If you really want to learn about this stuff in depth, uh, go to MotoIQ.com and hit our search feature. We literally have thousands of articles of all kinds of levels of tech and you can learn a lot and it's more in depth than we get in these videos. If you want to see what we're doing here on a day-to-day -day basis, follow us on social media. So follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And if you want us to look, work on your stuff, go to MotoIQ.com, click on the Garage Services link, and we'll get back to you. Uh, we do read the comments, and I, I try to answer a lot of your questions. Um, sometimes I have a smart-ass answer, but I'm kind of sarcastic, so bear with me. When we read your comments, we get ideas for other, other videos you might want. And so we pay attention to that stuff. So here you go. K-Series Cylinder Head. See you next time.